Two years ago, I talked on uh, something completely non-technical. This year, I was like, I'm doing technical. Went really technical, and then realized there was no way I could do it in 10 minutes. So uh, same concept, but we're gonna scale it back a little bit. Uh, this is basically stuff that I've experienced on multiple uh, occasions. And in case you don't know, I am not Sam Clements. Uh, my name is Jonathan Davis, I go by JD. Uh, if you don't know the joke there, uh, you're not watching Center Freaks, which uh, Sam and I uh, co-host. Uh, information that you can later on find on the video, I'm moving right past it. So for the last 10 years, I've been very focused on Wi-Fi, and I've spent a lot of that time in uh, warehouse and manufacturing space, and right now I'm in the government space, and, and, and a lot of those really fun wireless environments where you have higher, higher gain antennas and you have unique installations. It's not carpeted office space where every, where every access point is sitting on the, on the ceiling. So um, when we talk about the standard antenna system components, we talk about a connector at the AP, uh, radio chain, feed line connector, lightning protection connector, uh, feed line and, and antenna element, right? Um, and I've seen a lot of mistakes made by uh, reputable, well-respected uh, wireless people in, the, in this space. Um, I think a lot of people forget that LMR has loss and that, that loss and, and really all of the RF characteristics of, of feed line is not consistent across the bands, right? So a great example, if we just, if we, if we just look at loss, it, it affects a lot of things, but if we just look at loss, We've got 6.6 .6 dB of loss per 100 feet uh, at, um, uh, for, for 2.4. When you get in the 5 gig band, notice that the difference between channel 36 and the channel uh, difference between channel 165, there's, there's 0.8 dB difference there. And if we start thinking forward, uh, in fact, what should actually we should be hearing about right now to 6 gigahertz, it's, it's almost logarithmic. I think it, uh, on the low side of six gig, you know, it's uh, you know, like 12 dB. On the, on the high side of six gig, it's like 17 dB. I mean, it falls off a cliff, right? And we're talking about 17 dB of loss. And not only that, but we're talking about such a huge difference, right? So in, in this situation where you have a DFS event in five gig, your, cell, your, 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 your receive sensitivity, more importantly, it's, it's less about cell size. It's really more about receive sensitivity here just did this just because your access point decided to change channel, right? And this is assuming a perfect, uh, a, a perfect, you know, perfect feed line in perfect condition, perfect uh, lightning arresters that have not been, uh, you know, overused or, or should have been replaced, you know, five years ago. This, this assumes a perfect condition and a perfectly tuned antenna. Now this also affects Viswar, uh, capacitance and velocity in the cable. There's a whole bunch of other issues there, but we certainly aren't gonna talk about in 10 minutes. So real quick question. Beacons, where does the beacon come out from, from if, if we assume a four radio antenna or AP, where does that beacon come out of? See, for a long time, I assumed it was all the radios. But then when I started thinking about that, I realized you cannot do that, right? Because we still have AB and G clients that don't understand transmit beamforming in any way, right? So you, and more importantly, if you tried to send a beacon out transmit, transmit uh, beamforming, your, your, your up fade is my null, right? You're getting the benefit of it, but I'm not, and I, but I'm still associated with the access point. So in almost all situations, in all situations I've tested, an access point sends out the beacon in a single radio chain. So that's got a lot of, um, you know, we have, we have to take this a little further in our heads, right? So if we, if we think about a standard patch antenna alignment, and I'm sorry there's not pictures in here, I had pictures to load and um, th there, was a, there was a problem with them. Um, so if we think about a standard patch antenna, let's, let's go to a warehouse, uh, it's quite common, you put the, the patch antenna at the end of the aisle, shooting down a long aisle, right? But what a lot of people then end up doing is they end up turning that, that patch antenna 90 degrees, right? Because what you want is you want to cover that long aisle and you want to push almost no RF through the, through the racks into the next aisle. But what happens, when you, what happens when you've done that to the antenna element that's sending the beacon? You've now cross-polarized it. It's not a big deal when you, oh, I took my phone out. It's not a big deal for like an iPhone, right? The, the, or or mo, you know, small mobile devices, they're built with number one. So our, our laptop, you've got three antennas. You've got one that's at, at least one that's you know, cross-polarized, no big deal. Uh, that, that iPhone's got a negative dB uh, antenna system to ensure that this doesn't change signal when you turn it, when you turn it sideways, right? 
But when you go into warehouses, you've got uh, forklifts, you've got tow motors sometimes they're called, right? And oftentimes they have the, the uh, mounted computer and of course there's so much metal around and you don't know what's going on. So the, excess, or the antenna then gets relocated up on, on top of the cage. And I've seen anywhere from just a standard 2.2 dBi pole, uh, dipole up to you know, a six. And I even in one uh, warehouse saw nine dBi and, uh, antennas. Now we're talking about antennas that are very sensitive to cross polarization, right? So if you have a beacon that's coming out cross polar, that, that's being transmitted cross polarized, when it, it only affects in the beacon frame, right? But how do we how do we decide roaming, right? So the the tow motor whips around the corner, it's halfway down the aisle, and it's still seeing. Hey, sorry, I'm moving way ahead. Eight to ten dB less than it should actually see, only because it's cross polarized. So so when you're hooking the so. Assuming you actually follow the antenna leads that are labeled, that's the reason they're labeled, right? You're, you're seeing an eight to 10 dB loss is what I have seen on a regular basis. This is stuff I've tested over, over the last few years, especially when I was working in, in manufacturing and in warehouse a lot. Um, so you have to actually, number one, know which, which leads go to which elements and you have to know which, how those elements are, are polarized. So when we went through this earlier, what's missing? Uh, weather protection. This is another one that I've seen time and time and time again. Um, this, so, so water invades and destroys RF systems. It's, it's it, especially if you're in, if you're like me and you're in the Southeast, anywhere that there's a lot of high humidity, uh, this, is, this is something you have to worry about. And, 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 and one of the things that, I'm gonna actually jump forward. If you look at the very last one here, this is, this is uh, linked in the previous slide. You can, you can uh, read this for yourself. But in as little as two feet of cable, due to the daily temperature shifts and barometric pressure shifts, there can be as much as a one to two PSI difference in as little as two feet of cable. So now we're, talking, now we're not talking long feed line. We're talking about literally our whips that come out of the antenna, right? And so you have a, an enclosure, you have an external uh, uh, AP, you come out of the whips, you, you connect that to an, uh, to an uh, that is connected to an, uh, an, an, an antenna. And what happens is, is through, due to that up and down temperature, temperature is probably the worst because if you think about it early in the morning when you've got dew, because everything's condensing, that's also the time when that feed line is the coldest and the, and the air starts to warm up so, so water condenses on the feed line. And while that's happening, you now have a temp, uh, a, also a pressure shift that's taking place. And so what happens is, is that water gets sucked in and it invades the inside of the cable and it starts, uh, 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 it, it'll actually use, depending upon the type of cable, it'll actually use the, the dielectric in, as a sponge and it'll travel down the dielectric, right? So now that we've done that, what we've done is we, number one, as it says, we get, um, water plus current plus dissimilar metals, galvanic corrosion at high power. So I also am a ham operator and do some other RF stuff. Uh, at high power, you can literally lose the center pin in a day. It will go completely corrode away in a day. At our power, that it, it takes longer. But no matter what, as soon as, as soon as that starts to corrode, now we're inducing more loss, right? Now it's no longer, a 0.9 dB loss, right? Now it's, it's much, much higher, right? The other thing that starts happening is, uh, let's see here, sorry. So Nick's cuts, all of that also makes it easy, but in general, the water, this, this is important, the water actually invades through the connector most often, right? So if you're not putting uh, uh, the rubber, either the, the, the rubber gummy, in fact, let's go ahead and move forward real fast, because I know I'm low, low on time. Put a rubber on it. Uh, it, I get it, you don't want to use the rubber gummy. No one does, it's, that stuff's horrible, it doesn't work well, you come back to replace something years later and it's just, it's impossible to get off. There's two things, there's heat shrink, but more importantly cold shrink. Cold shrink is literally rubber like you would expect, there's a center core around it, or inside of it. You slip it over, What you get it in place, you grab the, the center core, and it, 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 un, uh, it, it literally zips out of, of the center and then now it can come down. So you don't need heat, you don't need a source of power or a blowtorch or anything to shrink things down and you're keeping water out. Because the big thing here is 
once, that, one, once you get water inside, right, a few things can happen. Uh, the water, as it, as it goes through free cycles, it begins to deform your outer shield. And as soon as you do that, now you change, you change the impedance of the cable. And as our impedance changes, now we also are in a situation where we have increased loss, right? If we manage to get a hole in that shield due to freezing, due to, to, due to the expansion and all that, our signal is now capable, the, the signal that's traveling on the, inside of that, on the inside of that shield can make it to the outside of the shield and it becomes common mode current. That feed line is now a really poorly in tuned antenna. So that feed line is actually transmitting your signal that you're trying to make out of an antenna. And if that's happening inside of a building or somewhere you don't want, to, want it to be, uh, you're, it, it, it further degrades your system. So. I'm, I'm 40 seconds over, I apologize for that. Thank you for your attention and think about your antenna systems.